Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. Do not forget, today is going to be the day where we have all the chip tastings on aroundthecabin.com forward slash campfire. And of course, it comes on at Tuesday at 9 p.m. every time that it happens. So if you guys go around the cabin, you'll see all the rest of that good stuff like that there. You've been looking at this tag for long enough, and it's time to say bye-bye. Bye-bye, tag. Go, go, go away. Okay, so now today's video is going to be very simply put. I'm going to be telling you guys about, of course, on today's date, I'm going to be telling you about survival. Survival, survival. Tuesday, August 25th. I, I usually try to do that first, but I'm screwed up today. Okay. Uh, in the preference of making things available and doing stuff, we're talking about things in, well, the mindset of what do you have, when can you use it, having it with you is much better than not having it, and of course, what's the bare minimum that you could probably survive on? Well, absolute bare minimum you probably could survive on would probably be a pocket toolbox. At the very least, it would probably be a knife of fairly good size. It would probably be something that actually has a good edge on it. Failing that, it would be one with multiple knife blades where you basically can no one, flip it out of the way, because it's not going to be easy to sharpen the field. You have another knife blade, multi-purpose tools. Of course, if you have all these things, it's great. You know, saws and screwdrivers, what have you. Not so much a screwdriver in the wild, because that's really not going to be something that you're really going to be encountering much. You know, But if you are punching holes and stuff, all these various little fiddly bits do actually help. Now, if you actually have a true survival kit itself, you are entirely much more ahead of the curve than the guy going, um, I just got a knife. Well... If you actually have a full-on, you know, pretty much put together, run and roll, out of the box, quite literally, survival kit, you will be much better off in, you know, very, very good stead. Now, case in point, this is going to be one of the ones I've had forever. I mean, I put this thing probably together back, <clears throat> I think I put this thing back together, or I put it together in, like, the 80s or 90s. So there's a lot of period stuff that's not easy to source anymore, and it has pretty much probably been relegated into the realm of either obsolete or obtainium. So, case in point, this thing's actually kind of more of a time capsule right now than anything, but it is one of my first efforts at a survival kit. Now, what I actually did use is I used one of the classic military uh, waterproof, <laughs> waterproof, waterproof first aid kits, and these things actually do have a seal. So, they actually do have a rubber seal on board, and they actually do seal. Now, case in point, you know, carrying around some can't wipe is not a bad thing to have. So, you know, obviously, multi-purpose stuff here. Uh, obviously, some paper napkins. Simply go to any restaurant. Uh, I believe in this case it was KFC. <laughs> KFC. And uh, pretty much just grab yourself some napkins. You know, it basically be used as can't wipe. Uh, it could be used for fire starting. Uh, case in point, these things that come in handy that you're going to need, you probably should have on your person. Now, trying to sharpen a knife in the woods is not easy. That's why I stocked on here one. It's got probably something that's not even available anymore, but it is ceramic on one side and corborundum on the other side. And if that can't put an edge on something that's already partially sharp, you're in trouble. You've done major damage to your knife. <laughs> shoot cord. You can never go wrong with having shoot cord. I actually did think this thing through and put on a nice big safety pin just in case. Pop a button, need to keep the pants back up. These things work great. Uh, case in point, uh, I decided, and this is actually one of these kind of older school things, but they are still around if you look for them. What this has is it has uh, sodium acetate in a water solution. Now, literally what you do with this thing is you put it into a pot of boiling water. And literally that's all it is. The pot of boiling water then dissolves the sodium acetate back into a liquid form, and you have this little almost coin thing in here that when you bend it, puts a shock into it that starts a catalytic reaction by making the thing recrystallize. Now, in the process of recrystallizing, all that heat that you use to make this stuff liquid comes back out as exothermic excitation. Read it gets warm, and it stays warm for a while. So this is a completely reusable, never able to wear out unless you break the packaging or kill the coin. But even then, you still could probably do it. You could just take it and like, flick it with your finger, and it'll still react. Now, the thing is, you've got to be careful with these things. You have to handle them fairly gently, or they self-react and go off prematurely. Basically, the cock gun you're not being careful with. So, these things actually do work in a very cool tech. They are still around. Pretty much all it is is just a melt, use, melt, use. And this might be a little bit of a longer video, because I'm, I'm pretty much looking for content here. So, case in point, you have on board a reusable, reusable, that's key, reusable heating solution. That's cool. 
Now, the kicker also is, in the woods, you're going to have situations where you're getting dehydrated or you're hurting for hydration. You wish to have salt at all times. Notice it is in its own separate Ziploc bag, just in case. Case in point, of course, more fire starting ability. These are so, so, so expired at this point, and it's not even funny. I think these things expired. Oh, God, I can't even read the date anymore, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these things are these things are way dead. But in the, the realm of thinking along the lines of that, having a form of water purification, read like a bottle of bleach, a couple drops in a quart of water, a couple more drops if it's really, really skanky stuff, <clears throat> will hold you in good regard. That will kill off all the bougies. Let it sit for half an hour at least. Bleach kills most things very, very efficaciously. Of course, some candle stubs. Uh, these things are good also for sealing waterproof seals, resealing waterproof seals, of course, lighting fires, and of course, light. Do they stay lit the easiest? No, but candles are something good to have in your go pack, just in case. This one's also broken in half, so probably what I would do is I just snip it off and have two smaller candles. So if I go to sleep, I'll light a candle, and this is key. Do not ever do this to yourself. Do not light a big candle, and if you're drowsy, start reading the book, because by the time you wake up, your candle is done. Take that candle, cut it into sections. Use that piece of candle to read by. So if you go to sleep, you only have a little piece of candle missing. <clears throat> You're not missing, like, all of your candle. Don't do that to yourself. Just classic thinking. Of course, we have some fishing line. And, of course, we also have a carpenter's pencil. Carpenter pencil actually is a dual-use item. Number one, you write with it, obviously. Number two... This is a classic old trick they used back in World War II. When they were using the M1 Garin, and the M1 Garin would get kind of sluggish, gunky, nasty, whatever, and you know, really, really cold weather, they would use the gun dry, they would take a carpenter's pencil, and they would scrub the graphite into all the keyways and all the areas where everything was operating. Dry lubricant, it's not going to freeze. That is another tool in your toolbox. Chapstick. Another source of wax, obviously put it on your lips, obviously it's going to be good for like, you know, abrasions, all these things come into double use items. Uh, I actually, I'm not going to open this one up because obvious reasons, but you know, duh, obviously what's in here is the fishing kit. Okay, also obviously, we also know what this is, this would be the military style striker and of course magnesium fire starter, very, very handy stuff. Okay, also, obviously, we would need to have some gun lube. So I'm actually pretty good in this regard. I have these little tiny tubs. You can still find these guys, but it is surplus hard-use lubricant for your firearms. I would say probably not use it so much on the M16, maybe like on top of the hammer, maybe like, you know, around sear areas. You know, really good hard abrasion points. That's where you want to use this stuff. An M16 can actually be used dry because the inside of the receiver is actually coated with Teflon. Dirty little secret. Uh, also, I have a M14, M1 Garand style lube container. Now, obviously, you see a little, you know, the gunk in the bottom there. That's because this is CLP. CLP stuff will settle back out. Shake it for a couple minutes. It's back in solution. Does fine. This other side is packed full of, you guessed it, that grease. Okay, going through the rest of the box, we have a, another sharpener. This one, of course, is one I modified slightly. It's an old butterfly sharpener. You can't find these things anywhere anymore, but that is two pieces of carbide, and that will put an edge on anything that's duller than all get out. It will put an edge back on it. Also, it's very small, very light, very easy to find. Back in the old days, not so much now. Case in point, I was thinking logically, a not best in the world, but still usable pair of pseudo Leathermans. Of course, another napkin to keep it quiet. And of course, more fire starting stuff. Also on board, I did put some razor blades, just in case. These things can be modified into arrowheads. These can be used for, you know, obvious cutting ability and obvious stuff where you don't want to dull up your knife. You want to dull these things first. Very easy, very simple. Uh, also on board, I have, uh, I know you guys are going to love this one, but this is a diamond nail file. Now, why am I carrying a diamond nail file? Well, very simply put, it's the same almost exact thing as a diamond sharpening stone for your knife. Get it wet. You will not remove the diamonds from the nickel. And all this is is steel, nickel, diamond dust. That's it. That's why these things never wear out. That's why these ladies love these things. And this one actually happens to be a Revlon. Notice it's very nice because it tells you on one side shaping, on one side finishing. So, you know, fine, rough. No great mystery. Okay, also on board we have, I have all things that's going to be probably one of the best things ever you should have on your person. A NASA-style military 
whomever, survival blankie. Not very, very organized for long use, but if you're trying to not freeze your butt off, these things are awesome. Okay, also on board, I have some ammo. Obviously, 22 is easy to pack. 50 rounds of 22 is like no space at all. If I was really smart, what I would probably do is I would use the other style of box that basically has them stacked up down. No, there's a reason why. I want to keep them separate and not banging against each other. And that's one of the cool things about these CCI boxes. They are infamous for this. Winchester uses them too, but that's more like the 100 round count boxes. I don't think I've really seen too many of the 50 count ones. That is CCI for the stingers. Old, old stinger box. They don't really look like this that much more. Uh, but case in point, same stuff. So anyway, all this tech is now on board, and it's now ready to do its job. And I kind of played around with it and made everything fit. I'm not going to put anything back together. Kevin's going to take too long. But all this technology fit in something the size of this. Now, how heavy is this box all in told? Probably somewhere over about five pounds or so, okay? So pretty much if you got something that's five pounds, the only thing you got to figure out then is food. And you have to figure out something for your water container. And then, of course, you have to find some way of having a tarp or shelter or something along those lines. But this would be half the kit already going out the door. There's a lot of things you have to worry about. Secondary uses. I mean, obviously, fishing line could be used for trapping. Uh, obviously, could be used for stringing stuff up. If you have a heavy-duty enough fishing line, you can use it for all kinds of things. If it's a light enough fishing line with a fishing hook, and this is not fun, but it will work, you can use a fishing hook with fishing line to suture stuff. I would use probably the smallest non-barbed hook I could find, but, you know, suit yourself. Literally, suit yourself. If you're cut, suit yourself. All right, folks, I'm going to break up on this one. Eagle Kit and Sundering is always, always, you know it, you love it. Survival Kit goodness. Oh, man, this one's really kind of a time capsule, too. Kind of cool to look through it again. Kind of shows me where, where I was and where I am now. Good times. See you guys. Eagle Kit and Sundering is always, always, you know it, you love it. Build a survival kit. See you guys.